Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Few of you have a Happy New Year. Some of you do not, apparently. I'm so sorry for you all. Yeah, I know. You're wondering if it will be a good year. Well, good year's a blimp. Beyond that, I... Good year tires, good year blimps. They fly over football games. Nothing? I thought that... That joke... Yeah. That joke went over like the Hindenburg. Goodness, you know the Hindenburg at least. All right. So, it is the new year, and a lot of people during this time of year make things called resolutions. How many of you have New Year's resolutions? None of you. Ah, James. Finish writing a book. Chloe. You have an entire year to clean your room. That's a great resolution. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Oh, Luis. Be better. Be better. All right. A few more. Every year hit a home run. So you might have heard this phrase going around. How many of you have heard the phrase, new year, new me? You guys have heard that phrase before? What it's generally conveying is that last year there were some things about me that I didn't like. That as I look back over the course of the year, there are some things that I'd like to leave behind. And as this new year is starting, there is going to be a new me, a better me, if you will. Right? We hope for better. We, le we yearn for better. Right? Uh, how many of you have seen... Uh, uh, the second of the uh, Crudes movies. Me! What? I just watched it like last week. I love that movie. The Bettermans, right? We try to be Bettermans. Because there's a Betterman way. Yes, Amber and Audrey watched that movie a lot. I have almost memorized that movie. There's a lot. Anyway. Very odd. Okay, moving on. We can't yearn for better or yearn for new without looking to Jesus. Because if we try just behavior modification, maybe we'll get about a week in, maybe two weeks, if we're really dedicated, maybe about a month, and then we go back to the way that things used to be. For a lot of people during this time of year, they like to go to the gym and say that they're gonna shed those few pounds that they gained during the holiday season, right? And so these people, generally the bane of my existence, will show up, They'll hog a machine, and they'll do that for about a month, and then they leave and never come back, right? Or for us, sometimes maybe it's a Bible reading plan. You try to do the Bible in a year, and you get to about Exodus. Maybe if you're lucky, you get through Exodus, but you hit the wall of Leviticus or Numbers, and then you just kind of stop and it falls to the wayside. We feel a little guilty for about a week or two, but then we don't pick it up again, right? Is that resonating with any of you? Because it resonates with me. So, in order to really be new, we need to look at what the Bible says makes us new. We can't just have these earthly resolutions that we try to drum up on our own strength and ability because that's going to fail us. I have failed myself many, many times and will continue to fail myself in life. But Jesus gives us a better way. And he calls us to something newer. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to open to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to be in verses 17 through 21. And I want to look at what Jesus says about being made new. If you don't know where 2 Corinthians is, it's after 1 Corinthians, obviously. It's mostly 90% of the way through your Bible. If you do the flip method, it does work. I've, I've used the flip method on the Corinthians. Corinthians what? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5. All right, we're going to be in 17 through 21. 
It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God, making His appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. I hope you caught what Paul is actually saying here, because this is revolutionary and mind blowing. All right? In other passages of Scripture, he compares it to the miracle of the dead being made alive. That if you are in Christ, you are already a new creation. That it doesn't matter what your New Year's resolution is because you've already been made new in Christ. That's the most important resolution that you could ever have. So many people get caught up, oh, I want to get healthy. Oh, I want to look better. Oh, I want to get money or a job or get organized, which are all good things. But the most important thing is to be a new creation in Christ. It says the old has passed away, so I don't have to worry about my past. Right? And even as I continue growing in Christ-likeness and I stumble forward, Paul says that in Philippians, I forget what is behind and I strive for the upward call of Christ. The new has come, and all this is from God through Christ. He's reconciling us. Do you guys know what reconciling means? Broken relationships are being made whole. People that you couldn't talk to in the past, you can talk to now. We couldn't talk to God in the past. We couldn't please Him with any of our actions, but now we can because we have been made new. But it's not just for us that we have been made right with God. It says that we have been given a ministry of reconciliation. So whatever your New Year's resolution is, might I implore you, might I beg with you, to view your life, as Paul says here, as an ambassador. You have been made new not just for yourself, but so that the world can look at your life and say, surely there is a God. That as you pick up the dishes that your sibling is supposed to do, your parents look at you and say, surely there is a God in heaven. You get where I'm coming from? Alright? How many of you know what an ambassador is? Yes? An ambassador? Yeah. That's right. A different country. They represent the leadership of the country that they've been sent from, right? If you are in Christ, if you are this new creation, you are an ambassador to the world. You don't just represent yourself. You represent Christ everywhere you go. So that as you go to McDonald's and as you're eating your chicken nuggets and you get a little ketchup on the table and you just leave it and throw it away, you represent Christ Maybe we go back and we wipe it up and leave it better than we saw it. Right? Or as we're going to school, you're hearing these conversations where people are just constantly putting each other down and you want to join in because it's fun. That's not representing Christ well. Instead, we can go into these conversations and say, hey, no, this person has been made in the image of Christ. And they're either eternally going to be with Him or they will eternally be separated from Him. But either way, they're still made in the image of God and therefore they have value and I will lift them up. That is, people kind of gossip around you. You don't get caught in with that gossip even though it's tickling to the ears. It feels so good to gossip, right? Like it feels like you're part of something. Like you're in the in crowd. 
Let me guarantee if people gossip with you, they will gossip about you. That is the old you put on the new you, which is an ambassador of Christ because we are called to reconcile people. We are bringing people into this relationship with us and a relationship with Christ. It says in verse 20, God is making His appeal to the world through you. You are His representative. It says, for our sake, He made Him to be sin who knew no sin. That's Jesus. That as we ring in this new year, all the sin that you have, the things that we do that don't please God, we can put it aside. All the temptations that so easily entangle us, we can say no to. That before, when we weren't made new, we had no opportunity to even say no to our temptation. We would just blindly jump into it like, there I go! But now we have the opportunity to say, this isn't what God wants for me. It's not good for me. It's not good for the world around me or my relationships with other people. That I can say no to this and yes to Christ. That I can put my selfishness in check for this new year. And say, hey, you go first. You get the best of the things that I like. One of my favorite dishes that my grandma makes uh, around this time of year, I would see her every year, every Christmas or Thanksgiving. Growing up, she would make these uh, peanut butter rolls. They're really good. It's uh, basically you take these frozen rolls, right? You let them thaw out, you roll it out, and you spread it with some peanut butter and sugar. It's a few other ingredients. It's peanut butter, sugar, butter, and sour cream. The sour cream really just kind of helps offset it. It's not that much. But you spread it in, you roll it up, you bake it. It's like a cinnamon roll, but it's peanut butter deliciousness. Now, I have learned how to make peanut butter rolls. So for Thanksgiving and Christmas this year, I made them for my daughters. They both love them. But it pleases me as a father to see them sharing them together. That when it gets to the last one, they're not bickering and arguing over which one gets it. Like Schmeagel going after the precious, right? That's what we're called to. We're called to live a life of self-sacrifice because we have all we need in Christ. That if we're a new creation, we get these things. Jesus tells us, to deny ourselves daily, to pick up our cross and follow Him. He tells Nicodemus in John 3 that we have to be born again. That this is a daily thing. It's not just a new year that reminds us we're a new creation. It's the new dawn that should remind us that you're a new creation in Christ. That every morning we wake up thanking God that He is making us new. And if you don't believe me, Revelation actually ends with this. All right? If you could go to Revelation 21.5, because everyone wants to know what's in the book of Revelation. You don't really need to... You should know what's in Revelation. Don't get me wrong on this. But the big point is how Revelation ends. And Revelation 21.5 says this, and he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, who is the one who is seated on the throne? Jesus. This is Sunday school answer. I couldn't softball this one easier. Jesus is saying this. Behold, I am making all things new. There's going to come a time he's going to wipe away every tear. He's going to make every wrong right. He's going to make every old thing new. But right now he's making you new. So whatever your New Year's resolution may be, whether it's be better at sports, get fit, get organized, might I recommend that your New Year's resolution should be to wake up every morning and recognize that Jesus is making you new, that Jesus is making you more like Him, that He's called you to be an ambassador to the world around you, to represent Him wherever you go, so that you can bring His kingdom where you are. 
have been listening to Cross Point Youth Ministry. For more information or to see how you can get involved, please visit crosspointbible.org. Thank you, and God bless.